What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and today we're gonna we're feeding today. So rather than uh, showing some feeding videos, we're gonna go and take a look at some cool boas, some grow up boas, and we're gonna look at a specific gene that I just recently have incorporated into my breeding projects, and that's the Ralph uh, Davis Reptile RDR Black Eyed Annery gene or Black Eyed Aneurysmic gene. What that gene does is it creates a snake with black eyes that has the, re you know, aneurysmic means the removal of red. But this particular black eyed anery um, gene that's not compatible with the type one or type two anery gene seems to also remove yellows. It's almost has like an azanthic component to it, which is really very, I find very interesting because a lot of boas as they get older, even the albinos get yellow, you know, which is nothing wrong with that. They look cool, but they just, they get a yellowed appearance to them. And so they don't look like they did when they were babies when they were very snow whitish. So this could be an interesting gene to get into some of these projects to get rid of the yellows where they're not wanted. Sometimes they are wanted, but where they aren't wanted, this would be an interesting gene to incorporate. And I know uh, my friend Mike Weitzman over at Basically Boas has really been championing that gene and he probably is the, the, the main guy with that gene right now. And I've gotten a couple of my snakes from him and I'm gonna show you some of the really amazing ones and some of these projects I'm putting it into. And we'll just take a look at a bunch of nice cool snakes. Let's check it out. Here is a beautiful, beautiful looking paraglow. That is a hypo paradigm. The paradigm, once again, is one copy of the bow woman caramel gene, one copy of the sharp albino gene. You combine them, they get it, you get an axe like super form, and you get this the paradigm. And then you add the hypo gene to that, so you got a paraglow, we call that. This is 66% het RDR black eyed anery. And I really hope this proves out. Pattern is kind of a little wacky, so I'm hoping that this girl proves out. Maybe next year we'll breed. I love this, um, just getting into this black eyed anery gene, which to me looks like an anery and a xanthic gene combined because not only does it remove red, but it seems to remove yellow. It, it prevents these animals from getting yellow as they get older. Um, I have a visual RDR um, black eyed anery and it, it, it's, it's basically white, this thing. And I got this, uh, this animal from Mike Weitzman, basically Boas, good friend of mine. And uh, love this girl, she's looking really awesome. I love everything Paradigm. Paradigm is so, so, such a nice combination. And this is one of the first Paraglows I've had uh, with the Hypogene. And I've, I've produced a lot of Paradigms. Paradigm Bloods, uh, Paradigm Hep Bloods. But this is the first Paraglow I have. Really nice. A lot more red in it. A lot more dilute. And just a lot of interesting contrast in that pattern. Look at the tail. So we'll see. When she breeds, if we can, uh, if she proves out to be a uh, black eyed anery. I think that gene has got a lot of promise. I know you guys have seen it probably in the Black Devils, which is the IMG uh, black eyed anery. That a lot of people have been uh, really getting excited about. But uh, to me, I like to see the black eyed anery gene in the snows and moonglow versions, which were called Arctics. Because what you get is a snake that stays white. The problem with you know a lot of the moon glows and snows and the sharp versions of those is that as they get older, they get yellow. But if you have a gene that removes yellow too, they stay white. I'll show you my male hypo, or possibly, probably super hypo, that's also sharp albino and uh, RDR black eyed anery and this thing is snow white still as an adult now this is a sharp sun glow also a 2018 hopefully it will breed for me next year and she is uh, just a hypo and sharp albino but what what interesting interesting color she's got she's a hundred percent um rdr black eyed anery this girl is not possible she is 100 percent and while she's not paradigm and she's just pure sharp albino, look at the colors on her. She's just really, really interesting looking. It's like she has this really orangey look to her. Her saddles are really kind of like blended. 
She's got a, like a striped tail. She almost looks like she has other jeans in her. Uh, but as far as I know, she doesn't. Also, really, really nice female that I'm growing up and hopefully will be in the breeding rotation next season. We'll see. And we'll see how she does this past, this over this next year. I think she could, I think she can do it. She's a good eater and she's putting on size at a nice pace, but not too fast. It's another really, really nice snake. Also more, a lot of potential with the RDR gene. All right, this is my dirty floor of my snake room. Um, it's not really that dirty, but you get the picture. And this is an, uh, a hypo, probably super hypo, sharp albino that's RDR black eyed anery. And look at this thing. This is an adult male who's in the breeding rotation this year. I got it from Mike Weitzman. Um, it's probably one of the nicest bows I've ever seen. It doesn't have a hint of yellow anywhere in the snake. It's obviously albino. So it's got the red eye. Normally it would be a black eye if it didn't wasn't albino because it's a black eyed anery. And look at this, perfectly white. Now it's patternless because it's probably super hypo. Okay, that really erases most of the pattern. The albino takes away all the darkness and then the black eyed anery will take away the red and I, and I believe it takes away all the yellow too. Really, really nice clean looking Little boy. A lot of potential with this gene moving forward. Um, once again, I like a white snake. This snake is whiter than my Super Fire diamond. Really is. If you look at it. Because <laughs> the Super Fires have, have some black speckles in them. Because they're really not albinos. They're, they're leucistics, obviously. This snake, best looking albino I've ever seen. All right, in contrast to the last snake, I wanted to show you my super fire diamond female that hopefully will breed this year. Haven't seen a single lock with the with the male I have in here, but hopefully we're, we're hoping, we're hoping. But here she is, look, I mean, she has dark pigment spots on her because she is not albino, she's leucistic. Um, and, and leucistics can have dark and pattern on them. And once again, albino removes all the black and gives them a red eye. This is not an albino, it's a leucistic. Just a lack of, of, of all pigment, but not really. <laughs> There's always an exception to the rule. She has other genes, obviously, that are creating some pigment spots in her. So she does actually have some... She looks like she might be um, even getting close to ovulation here. She's um, She has been sitting on the hot spot a lot, too. I don't know. It's, it's, it is a little cool in the snake room because I've cooled down my whole building because of the olive pythons in the other room. <laughs> so I don't know if she's just cool or if she's, uh, you know, she's starting to possibly you know, go through some of her cycles and we're going to see some breeding action soon. Once again, I don't, you know, you don't, a lot of times, you know, people get panicked because they don't see breeding, but a lot of times they breed at night, you know, while you're sleeping, you won't even see it. Uh, so you'll miss locks. It happens to me all the time. I miss stuff, but you never know. Anyway, I wanted to show you this, this girl. She's gorgeous, obviously. You know, I, I love her and one of my favorite snakes in the collection. So hopefully we'll get some babies from her this year. Still have got nothing from her. I got one year, I got two years ago, I got slugs. I obviously gave her off the year last year, and then we'll see what she does this year. And if you look at this snake, this is a sterling, or an albino sterling. And this is, so this is a patternless albino, essentially. So you can see, when this snake was a baby, it was white. And it got a little yellow as it got older, as most albinos do, which I still think looks cool. I, I like it. There's nothing wrong with that. You see certainly a lot of contrast. There's reds in there. And that's really kind of cool. But, you know, you're, you're not going to get a completely, a snake that stays white, so to speak. You know, you could even, you'll look at a moon glow, like my moon glow male, I'll show you in a minute. And he's also, you know, he should, when he was a baby, he was snow white. And as he got older, he got all the yellow as well. So that black eyed anery gene, if you're into whites, you know, is going to be something cool that, you know, you can cooperate and will tend to keep the snakes whiter as they age. And there's my moon glow. Um, once again, as a, as a baby, white as could be. And as he got older, you start to see, they still got white in him, but you start to see a little more yellow, uh, the yellow patches come in there. So the snake I showed you before, the, the super hypo, 
sharp albino. This is cow albino, but they, they both do the same thing, remove blacks. Sharp albino and then the black eyed anery um, was white. This is just a type one anery and this one has yellows in it. So there definitely is some azanthic nature to that black eyed anery gene that not only removes reds, but does remove yellows as well. Just kind of cool. You know, there's a lot of, there's, there's always new stuff happening. And so that's an interesting gene that I think is more going to see incorporated more and more into people's collections, myself included. Um, there's nothing wrong. I love the type one anery gene as well, but I think that this, this uh, black eyed anery gene is, is really super cool. And I know the carbon gene, which is another form of black eyed anery, I believe, um, does very something very similar as well. And we're going to see that also being incorporated more in the bow world. And I've showed you this, this beautiful, beautiful female before. She is my IMG sharp albino. It's also hypo, so IMG sun glow. And as she's aging, you can see she's got no blacks in her because she's albino. But look at the contrast. Look at that, what that IMG gene is creating, that darkness and the reds and all the, the different weird contrasts you see. That's just super, super cool. And that, that's kind of, uh, you know, doing the opposite. Imagine if you put the, you know, put this together with that black eyed anery gene. I don't even know what it would look like. Would it make a white snake? Or would you have more contrast? I don't know. Because that black eyed anery would remove the reds and the yellows. What would be left to make darker? I don't know. Would you have a white snake? I don't know if anyone's done it yet. We'll have to see. But I love, I do love this. I do love this girl. I can't wait till she's ready to breed in like two, three years. <laughs> gotta be patient, guys. You gotta be patient. And I figure I'll just end today's video instead of with the boa, with one of my cool little baby berms that uh, is up for sale. This is a paradox. This is a genetic paradox, the Enigma line of, um, we're calling it the Enigma line because it does seem to be a genetically transmitted paradox. This is a granite that's 66% head albino and green. And look at the, uh, the paradox thing in there. It definitely looks like it could have green in it, but it doesn't. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just a granite with some paradoxing in there. Popping through. Interesting. Interesting look. You can see this looks... <laughs> You can see there's some blurring and stuff like that. Very cool looking snake. If anyone's interested, hit me up. This mail is for sale. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on boas and with a little sneak peek of a, a, of a Burmese python at the end there, of course. Got to throw something a little different in every once in a while. But the bottom line is that, you know, in the boa world, there's so many new things coming out and so many new genes and exciting combinations to put together. It's, it's really one of the most exciting, I think, snake uh, projects out there right now. I mean, obviously, there's new stuff in every genre of species, but I think the boas is a really, really exciting time now because we're really hitting some really crazy combos and combining new morphs together and, and producing stuff that has never been produced in the history of boa breeding. So this season, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of more firsts like we did last year. Hopefully, I'll be able to produce a bunch of cool stuff as well. And I'll keep showcasing what I got and try to, you know, keep you guys informed. If you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up. You know, I'm always open to answering questions and I'm always open to your suggestions too because I'm always learning every single day as well. So it's a, it's a give and take type of process. All right, I hope you're having a great day. You guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.